All right, Target becoming the latest brand to report a hit in sales after a social media backlash. This one involving Pride Month merchandise, what it was, how and where it was displayed, etc. And Bud Light famously became a target of anger and boycotts following its partnership with a transgender influencer. Today, analysts at Bernstein writing about how companies should handle the uh, tough situations that emerge when brands get involved in social issues. Joining us now is Nadine Sarwat, Bernstein analyst covering European and American alcoholic beverages. Nadine, welcome. Good to have you with us. Um, I guess the, 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 the key question is, how can companies thread the needle between trying to attract customers uh, who may be members of uh, minority groups, just to use a broad term, um, uh, that whose whose membership in that group may not be popular with, for example, their core customer. How do they thread the needle? I think you nailed it on the head right there. So if we take the Bud Light example, blow it out, look at beer more generally. I mean, this isn't the first time that we've seen companies miss out on a core demographic and it actually coming back to bite them. So for example, if we go back 20 years, uh, diversity, inclusion, ESG, perhaps less part of the mainstream discussion, but beer missing out on appealing to female consumers is actually one of the reasons it's losing share today. So what we can take away from that experience is that diversity and inclusion from that angle of ESG actually has real financial consequences. So if we apply that to the Bud Light scenario today, and if we look at the demographic splits of, let's say, LGBTQIA plus community for this Bud Light example in particular, one can understand why ABI would want to appeal to that type of consumer, especially seeing as Bud Light has been declining for years. But crucially, you know, what can we learn for CPG brands more generally in America today is that you simply cannot move faster than your core consumer. If we look at Nielsen scanner data, we see that Bud Light is disproportionately consumed on a per capita basis by men in Republican leaning states. And then if we also look at research, for example, by the Pew Research Center, we also then know that Republican leaning Americans view greater social acceptance of transgender individuals more negatively than their Democratic counterparts. So regardless of your so, personal opinion here, choosing uh, something that does not gel with your core consumer, you are absolutely mm -hmm. right, is a challenge. I hear you. I hear you on that. And I hear you saying very, very clearly to, to, to brand managers at, at whatever companies, never forget who your core customer is and remember that their sensitivities and sensibilities um, may be of a certain type and, and, and you don't want to alienate them. But let me ask you this. In the case of Target, we had on Jan Niffen yes, he was a retail uh, specialist, and he pointed out that Target, uh, which, as Courtney reported, uh, mentioned the backlash over their LGBTQ plus and transgender merchandise. Jan Niffen pointed out that Target has been carrying and celebrating these kinds of days for a decade or more. Why did it bite them this time today? What's changed in the culture uh, or, or in what Target did? to cause the backlash that they received? Well, I think, you know, more broadly, when we look at these issues or situations, whether that's Target, whether that's Bud Light, there are two pretty big things that are a little bit different nowadays. The first is the huge presence of social media. You know, when we look at the Bud Light scenario and very similar for Target, what happened was the incident occurred, the... Uh, partnership with an Instagram influencer or a TikTok influencer, I should say, or a display in Target was picked up by consumers and blown up by celebrities before even management uh, decided to step in, comment, and clear up the situation. So I'd say that's the first difference. But the second big difference, let's bear in mind, we're headed into an election year. Uh, and at least when it comes to these hot button topics, that means that you're going to get politicians getting involved. With Bud Light, we had Senator Ted Cruz. We had Governor Ron DeSantis all wading into the debate. And I think that makes the situation also different.